These migrants have been rescued after drifting for more than two days on the open seas. The German NGO SOS Humanity wants to prevent the Mediterranean from becoming a graveyard. Can they succeed? Rocco Aiello has been working as a search and rescue expert for six years. The team he leads includes doctors, nurses, emergency workers and other helpers who will support the migrants and translate for them. For most of the group, this is their first time on board a rescue ship. To prepare for what lies ahead, Rocco organises a practice drill. He wants to make sure everyone on the team knows what to do. The team is divided into two groups. The first poses as a boat in distress, the others act as rescuers. Many of the team members are volunteers. Some are spending their annual holiday here on board the Humanity One to take part in rescue missions. The first thing is for me, I need to test all crew for different position because we come from a different experience, so different background. Uh, I need to test them. I need to test the device as well to perform the best rescue. Uh, so we can try in these days many different scenarios because we don't know what we can find in a real situation. The central Mediterranean is one of the most dangerous migration routes. Over the past decade, more than 27,000 people have died or disappeared during the crossing. Some European governments have accused these civilian rescue ships of acting as pull factors for migration, effectively encouraging people to risk their lives. The crew of the Humanity One is now ready. And they've already received a call on Radio Channel 16. The message came from Eagle Two, a surveillance aircraft of the EU border agency Frontex. The boat in need of rescue is several hours away. This is Eagle 2, Eagle 2, call for assistance. Call for assistance on vessel. Vessel is in distress. Passengers on board. Approximately 15 to 20 people on board. The vessel is within the Maltese search and rescue zone. Josh, the captain of Humanity One, decides to head for the location. We don't have information if they issued any other than the Mayday Relay on Channel 16, but the Mayday Relay on Channel 16 is open for every ship in the vicinity and also overheard by authorities on land. Um, so Malta should be aware and of course we also informed Malta as well as Italy about our intentions via email. Human rights organisations have accused Malta of ignoring distress calls regarding boats at sea. On this occasion, Malta has not responded to Humanity One's email. The rescue team scours the horizon. They're now in a race against time. After sunset, they finally catch sight of the distressed vessel. All crew, all crew, all crew, get ready to rescue. Get ready to rescue. Deck, bridge, question. Bravo, ready to be launched, over. Yes, Bravo is ready to be launched. The crew has just minutes to launch the rescue boats, loaded with safety equipment. In the dark, the rescue operation will be more difficult, and the sea has become rougher than it was just a few hours ago. Finally, they locate and approach the vessel in distress. Hey, 
my name is Russell. I come from Europe, okay? You are safe now. First, the migrants are all given life vests. Bridge, bridge, bravo. Bravo, bridge, go ahead. The stability is so weak. The same for tango. Tango, slow down the speed. Oyol, keep position. When you are ready, we start to disembark. I'm ready. The biggest challenge right now is to stabilize the boats to make sure they don't capsize. Bravo, bravo, bridge. Question, how many people on board? Over. Bridge, for your information, we are approaching with one file, one file male. No medical case, no medical case. All good. The rescued migrants come from several West African countries. They had already spent more than two days on the boat. SOS Humanity requested that we do not reveal their identities for reasons of privacy. Every survivor is assigned a number, which will make it easier for the crew to provide for the migrants' needs. A new day brings the hope of a new life. One of the migrants is from Gambia. He's been allocated the number 61. We're calling him Omar. We ask him about his journey. For us, we have to take the byway from Mali, from Mali, Senegal, Algeria, you know, Tunisia. Then you cross. Before reaching Tunisia, you suffer a lot. Many people die in the desert. Hundreds of people die in the sea, thousands die in the sea. But the desert only is difficult. Omar was only 14 when he decided to risk his life in hopes of reaching Europe. Um, one of the reasons was, one, my education. I want to finish my education. And second, things were really hard for me and my family. Um, and I wanted to complete my career as a footballer and I think that's the best talent I have. But in Africa you cannot do it because you need to work to have something to eat, to feed your family, to feed yourself, you know, to buy some stuff you need. Omar has found a football and starts practicing his skills on board. Meanwhile, the rescue team is preparing for another operation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. This time, an aircraft is also monitoring the situation. Similar to the rescue ships operated by various NGOs, volunteer pilots also patrol the central Mediterranean route. They also keep records of alleged illegal measures carried out by various national coast guards, including what are called pushbacks, forcing migrants back to the country from which they attempted the crossing. A storm is approaching. The sea starts to get rough. The team has to work fast to complete the rescue. But as soon as they arrive back at Humanity One, they have to prepare for another rescue. A small, makeshift metal boat is on the verge of sinking. There are also two young children on board. Come, 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 come. On that stormy night, the crew carries out two more rescues. That brings the total number of survivors on board to 199. 
We speak with a woman from Ivory Coast. Marie, as she asks to be called, tells us why she embarked on the journey across the Mediterranean. I actually wanted to flee to Tunisia and not cross the Mediterranean. But working there and looking after my child at the same time was hard. The nursery I found for my child gave medicine to my child in order to make her sleep longer. I complained, even to the police, but no one cared. They also beat my child. That's why I left. We are unable to verify the accounts shared by the migrants. But most of the people who were rescued describe similar experiences, including Omar, the young man who dreams of becoming a footballer. My friends um, come from Libya. That way you have to jump grias upon grias, you know, barrier upon barrier. So what happened there? You have to run. It's running. Through day, you run for three days, sometimes two days. Dogs will be following at you. You have to run. If you stop, they will catch you. So if they catch you, the two things involved. If they catch you, they're going to detain you and they will beat you, much less before leaving you to get back to Libya. Who, who beats? The you Tunisian beat. police beats. They beat much less. They can beat you for two hours. As the shoreline comes into view, the people begin to celebrate their rescue. But what awaits them here is still unclear. One by one, they disembark in Italy. They have the right to ask for asylum. During the review process, they will be housed in various asylum centres. Omar, who had the number 61 on board the rescue ship, is given the number 40 on arrival. His dream is to one day wear a football jersey with a number of his own. As for Humanity One, it will soon set out on another mission to save as many migrants as possible from drowning in the Mediterranean.